Welcome to the Ron and Fez Show, another TV show for Al Roker. Yes, well, you know, we had a little time on the, off in the afternoon and thought, what the heck, let's produce another show. It just, uh, it shocks me, Al, that the Today Show is not enough for you. You, I see you on the Food Network, I see you traveling, you're running around. There's not enough out there in the world for Al Roker. Well, you know what, it, it's one of these things, I've, I've always enjoyed producing television more than being on it. I mean, uh, I, I never planned to be on TV, and, uh, but I, I got the gig, and I, I love what I do on the Today Show. I mean, it's, it's the best job in the world. But, I, you know, I've been given some great opportunities to, to do some fun TV, you know, some interesting TV. And uh, this one uh, on, on Spike tonight, 10, 10 o'clock Eastern, is, uh, is, is a different kind of show in that I look at it more as a documentary where we, we basically take you inside the DEA. You see what, what leads up to uh, uh, these busts. You know, we're talking to confidential informants, planning the logistics, uh, you know, the stakeouts. And, and then even more importantly, after the bus, the, the getting the, the, the drug dealer, whether it's a man or woman, to give up their source, the person to, uh, above them. And, and slowly but surely, they work up, the DEA works up the ladder until they get the, the kingpins. Wow. See, I tend to root for the other side, but I can understand um, why this would make exciting TV, Al. Well, it, it is. I mean, it's, uh, uh, I think, one of these things where you get a... Everybody, I think, kind of enjoys a little bit of a voyeuristic thrill looking at something that they're not used to seeing. Right. And what are, what are the, the drugs that they're... Uh, after people for what? What is the what is the big drug out there that? that well, you know, I mean, they're they're busting people in this in this season. You're going to see marijuana, crystal meth, uh, uh, heroin, crack, uh, cocaine. You know, I mean, everything out there. Prescription pills. Mm -hmm. So prescription pills, you you would break into like you'd go after the doctors or people who steal prescription pills a little a little of both i mean yeah. uh, uh we don't get into it quite so heavily i mean there have been you know like uh, some of these bus prescription pills being found in fact uh, i'm doing a documentary for uh, msnbc about prescription pill abuse uh, they, i mean it's a major major problem in fact uh last year in seattle more people died from pres prescription pill abuse than from heroin overdoses so you so uh, the, the people in the dea right now are seeing the fact that we don't know how personally to do prescription medicine or, or to give it out as a big as a problem as the old war on drugs yeah i mean it's 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 growing rapidly the prescription pill abuse problem is is, is really growing quickly yeah so is that something that you were always interested in or just being in the show kind of got you interested i think i think what what had happened was about four years ago i did a, a documentary on crystal meth mm -hmm. and uh i saw what the dea was doing and I thought, you know, nobody knows what these guys really do. I think this might be an interesting peek into a world that people don't normally get to see. And I think that's what, you know, when you combine uh, uh, kind of like this access to a world you're not used to, combined with really compelling people, and, and a lot of these agents are very interesting, uh, mm -hmm. I think it makes for some riveting television. So how many shows do you have all together now? Well, you know, they, the shows come and go, but we've got about five or six in production right now. And you like to you like to to be involved with that many projects? It's yeah, yeah. still fun for you. Yeah, I mean, look, the the, the trick is you hire really good people mm -hmm. to run your shows, but you know, you've got to keep an eye on all of them. I mean, one of the people I I've been my idol uh, for the longest time was Dick Clark. Uh, uh, you know, this, and this was years and years before he had his stroke. I remember going out to L.A. to try to sell a show. And, uh, you know, the young company, we're just getting started. And I remember coming out the door from uh, uh, this pitch, and there was Dick Clark sitting ready to go in to pitch a show. And I'm thinking, wow, Dick Clark actually goes out and pitches shows? I mean, uh, he doesn't have people who, do, who does that for him, so, uh, who do that for him. So I, I you know, I, I always remember that. That's, you know, you've got, if you aren't really involved, if, if it's your company and you're not involved, then you may as well give up now. So is it fun for you to pitch shows? You get a big kick out of that? Yeah, I think you know it's, it's part of the sale. You know, you're trying to make the sale, trying to trying to convince somebody, hey, this is a great show. It's a show you believe in, and let's take a look. And does that tie out tie in with your broadcasting background? You still feel like like when you're on the Today Show, you feel like you're pitching? No, I, I you know, look, I, I, it's two different uh, skill sets. You know, mm -hmm. one is is kind of uh, being on air, kind of performing in a sense. 
uh, and, and, and relating to people, uh, you know, because at the end of the day, that's what television, if you're on TV, whether you're doing news, or you're doing entertainment or whatever, you're, you're relating to other people. So, you know, and, and that's what we do, in a sense, really, one person at a time. You know, we've got that audience, you know, the, the audience outside. We're but, talking with Al Roker, uh, standing by, uh, comedian Jim Norton. Jim Norton has called the show? Jim Norton has called the show. Um, hey, Jimmy, you... Jimmy. Hey, can you hear me, Ronnie? Yeah, you're on with Al Roker. Hi, Al. Hi, Jim. Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm on a, a Bluetooth connection, so I'm sorry if we get if I cover ground that's already been covered. But uh, I was just curious. Jim, you sound like you're calling from Mars. Yeah, no, I'm calling from inside a vehicle. Ah. I was wondering if you felt any any. Are you are you moving at the same time? No, I'm on. A, I have an iPhone, which is actually. Are you, but are, are you driving? No, but I am in a vehicle. But I'm. Oh, so you've pulled over to the side of the road. Yes, I am very... Oh, good. I'm glad you're practicing safe driving. Now, what I wanted to ask you was, did you feel there was any inconsistency? Because you were pretty instrumental in getting Imus dumped. Did you feel there was any inconsistency in that? Um, and then apologizing for the epilepsy joke afterwards? This has to do with what? Now, you were pretty instrumental in getting Don Imus fired. Right. You had a pretty... I, I, well, I disagree with that, but it was okay. You... you... All right, Jim, so you're asking something about the, the IMAs firing? Yeah, what I'm saying is, since Al was instrumental in, in getting Don fired through blogging, I'm, I'm wondering, did you feel there was any inconsistency when a month later you made an epilepsy joke and apologized for it where you felt Don's apology wasn't good enough? Well, first of all, look, it's, it's off topic, and I, and I appreciate trying to ambush somebody. But anyway, first of, all, first, of all, first of all, first of all, first of all, first of all, just shut ambush up and let me talk. First of all... Uh, I I I was not instrumental in getting Don Imus fired. Okay? okay, I don't I don't I don't make decisions. I'm not in management at NBC or CBS Radio. Okay, so that's well, first know. off. First okay. off, okay. Secondly, right. Don Imus had a history of making these comments. Yeah. I made one insensitive remark. Granted, it was insensitive, and I apologize for it. So they're, you're trying to cons you're trying to compare apples and oranges. You're right, I am, because I, and I'll say it like this. You were instrumental in the sense that even in your blog, you say people have been asking you how you felt about it. And I know that means people at NBC. No, they didn't. No, you're, you're misquoting my blog. Um, people weren't asking you how you felt about it? Did you, did you hear that? Did you read that in the blog? That no. people were asking no. you how you felt about it? Yes. Yes. And you were saying that you felt Don has to go right now, despite the I did not say that in the blog. Narrative. Didn't say it. What's but anyway, we're off topic. So, right, back on topic. It is different apples and oranges. I'm not talking about this anymore. Why not? So you got because you I'm not, I didn't call to talk about Don Imus. Yeah, but you didn't mind blocking about him. Okay. Have air. a nice day. Bye-bye. All, right. uh, all right, Jim, thanks for uh, calling. Uh, Al, your uh, show that uh, you called to talk about is on tonight. And he's gone.